Welcome to this Monday's Meow. Today, we're looking at the different construction materials used to construct cat suppressors, as well as their individual advantages. This may help users better select what construction material is more suited to their defense application and cut through a lot of industry and internet noise. Firstly, it's important for civilian users to understand that certain industry terms, such as full auto-rated, firing schedules, and minimum barrel length, are more marketing noise than actual science. Do these things exist? Yes, in a roundabout way, but not as an actual rating for civilian suppressor products. More often, manufacturers use these terminologies to instead infer that their suppressor products may have been through testing protocols run by organizations such as NSWC Crane, who oversee military testing programs such as the Suppressed Upper Receiver Group, where weapon systems are subjected to multiple 240-round firing and cooling cycles to test for thermal resilience, durability, toxic fume, and blowback. Secondly, these protocols are designed for military products, not civilian products, and manufacturers that undertake these testing programs do not receive a certificate or a badge. It's a minimum requirement metric for advancement in certain solicitations. For CAT, Military testing protocols are a minimum for civilian development. Not to do so is putting the civilian user at a disadvantage. To reduce confusion, it's simply easier to understand that all products have an operating temperature threshold. With suppressors, factors such as barrel length, rate of fire, type of ammunition, ambient temperature, and suppressor design all affect how quickly a suppressor can exceed its operating temperature. Therefore, it's impossible to create a one-for-all firing schedule for a suppressor caliber model unless the schedule lists all the above data points at a minimum and a civilian user then follows these exactly. At CAT, we believe educating the civilian user on the suppressor construction materials will assist the user far more, allowing them to create their own firing schedule based on their own weapon system as to stay within the operating temperatures of the suppressor material chosen. So, let's look at the differences between Titanium-64, Grade 5, and Inconel Alloy-718 in the DMLS additive manufacturing process. But what is DMLS, or Direct Metal Laser Sintering? Basically, it is an advanced 3D additive manufacturing printing process that allows for the fabrication of complex and intricate metal parts. With the ability to directly print metal powders layer by layer, it offers unique advantages over traditional manufacturing methods. The materials. Titanium 64, grade 5, 1. Composition. Titanium 64 grade 5, also known as TI6. AL4V, or TI64, is an alpha-beta titanium alloy consisting of 90% titanium, 6% aluminum, and 4% vanadium. It is well known for its high strength, lightweight, and corrosion resistance. It's widely used in aerospace, medical, and automotive sectors. 2. DMLS Process Parameters The DMLS process typically requires a laser power ranging from 170 to 330 watts for TI-64. The layer thickness is usually set between 20 to 50 micrometers, and the scanning speed lies between 800 to 1200 millimeters per second. The optimal processing temperature for TI-64 is typically around 1,400 degrees Celsius to 1,600 degrees Celsius. 3. Advantages TI-64 is known for its impressive strength-to-weight ratio, corrosion resistance, and biocompatibility. This makes it a popular choice for aerospace, medical, and automotive applications. 4. Usual operating temperature up to about 315 degrees Celsius, 600 degrees Fahrenheit. Beyond this, the strength of TI-64 starts to decrease and oxidation becomes a concern. Note that while TI-64 can be used at these temperatures, its strength-to-weight advantage over other metals diminishes as the temperature increases. Inconel Alloy 718 1. Composition Inconel 718 is a nickel-chromium-based superalloy with significant amounts of iron, niobium, and molybdenum, along with smaller amounts of aluminum and titanium, and is known for its excellent mechanical strength and corrosion resistance, especially at high temperatures, making it ideal for turbine blades, rocket engines, and nuclear reactors. 2. DMLS Process Parameters For Inconel 
718, the laser power is generally higher, ranging from 240 to 360 watts. The layer thickness is usually set between 20 to 50 micrometers, while the scanning speed can vary between 500 to 800 millimeters per second. The optimal processing temperature for Inconel 718 is a bit higher, falling in the range of 1,520 degrees Celsius to 1,670 degrees Celsius. 3. Advantages Inconel 718 is renowned for its remarkable resistance to corrosion and high temperature strength, making it an ideal choice for gas turbine components, jet engines, and other high-stress applications. 4. Usual operating temperature it can maintain its strength over a wide temperature range and is typically used in applications up to about 700 degrees Celsius, 1,292 degrees Fahrenheit. However, it also has some short-term intermittent usage at temperatures up to around 980 degrees Celsius, 1,800 degrees Fahrenheit. Inconel 718 is often used in jet engines and other high temperature applications due to its excellent creep resistance. Comparing differences. 1. Optimal processing temperatures. While both TI-64 and Inconel 718 require high processing temperatures, Inconel 718 demands slightly higher temperatures, attributed to its complex alloy composition. 2. Thermal conductivity. TI-64 has a lower thermal conductivity compared to many metals, leading to rapid heating and cooling during the DMLS process. On the other hand, Inconel 718 has a relatively higher thermal conductivity, which can result in a more gradual temperature change. 3. Microstructure and mechanical properties. The cooling rates, combined with the alloy's compositions, result in distinct microstructures. TI-64 typically exhibits a more pronounced columnar grain structure with a basket weave microstructure, whereas Inconel 718 develops a dendritic microstructure. These differences significantly impact the fatigue, tensile, and yield strengths of the final parts. 4. Applications and performance. The choice between these two materials in DMLS often boils down to the specific application requirements, such as the need for lightweight strength, favoring TI-64, versus high temperature and corrosion resistance, favoring Inconel 718. 5. Weight. For a given volume, the weight of Inconel 718 will be approximately 1.85 times that of a TI-64. 6. Sparking. TI-64, in general, can spark when it's subjected to mechanical agitation, such as striking against another hard material. This sparking is due to the fact that titanium can react with oxygen at elevated temperatures. The sparks observed are a result of the titanium particles igniting in the presence of oxygen in the air, with fine particles more prone to ignition than larger particles. Once these fine particles burn out after initial use, sparking can often cease or heavily diminish. The material property differences between TI-64 and Inconel 718 plays a pivotal role in determining the most suitable CAT suppressor. Please keep in mind that factors such as operating temperature values are approximate. The actual suitable operating temperature for a given application can depend on several factors, including specific suppressor design, stress levels caused rapid heating and cooling, and expected service life. Therefore, for a civilian user, there is no right or wrong construction material, simply personal choice based on science and user application.